Hello, here I want to share an idea I'm really excited about. You we all know GPT models that can predict the next token and uh, by this generate stories, write news articles and such. But wouldn't it be cool if we could do the same in the idea space? Like, let's say we, we want to go to the shopping center. We don't think in the pixel space, oh, I'm going to go to the door. I'm going to open it. No, no, no. I have this idea that I need to get to the door and that I get to put my clothes on and go to the shopping center. So if we could do exactly the same in, a, in an embedding space that contains the relevant semantic um, information, like the idea, independent of um, the certain modality. So here is the idea. Like We have clip. And in clip, we can train clip on images versus texts and by training it like with contrastive loss we can get pretty good semantic embeddings that contain the semantic information once we have this trained we can like freeze like freeze the text encoder and of course the image encoder and we can then train like for example an audio clip model here in this direction And then um, we train only the audio encoder to get into the same semantic embedding space as the text encoder and the image encoder already are. Maybe not exactly the same embedding space, but pretty close. And we could always use some, some mapping network like the DALI2 prior or so to get them closer. So, yeah. So we train the audio encoder on, on audio text pairs and we already at Lion are um, collecting more and more audio text pairs and have a pretty good plan to get like many more. And once we have trained this, like let's say a capital G um, audio encoder, I don't know, like a really big one, we can also freeze the audio encoder and then we can take a video encoder and the video encoder uh, doesn't need to see all the the pixels of every frame we can just take like every third or every fifth frame and um, compute the clip embeddings of the image encoder that we already have like here and like reuse the the image encoder of the clip to cre uh, create these semantic like snapshots of the third or fifth or whatever uh, frame and feed them like into a transformer and the image encoder is frozen and only on the top then the transformer like the, the video transformer and it learns basically now to to um yeah create like video embeddings video clip embeddings and we train it contrastively with the audio encoder so the advantage of this is we already have the frozen audio encoder and um then we can get the video encoder into the same space and we have so much data. We can train it on YouTube, on Netflix, on all videos we can get and get then the video encoder into the same space as the audio encoder and by this into the same space as the text encoder and by this into the same space as, as the image encoder. And once we have this, like we can like go like create, for example, um, an embedding of a video here and then we can um, use this together with some captioning model and generate text, a caption of the video, without even having trained any video text pair because we have audio text pairs and we have image text pairs and all are in the same embedding space. So this is really amazing. And um, to make this even better, like we could, can then later, once we have like this huge video encoder trained on all the videos we could get, we then can unfreeze here the, I let it, let's use this for unfreezing. We can unfreeze the audio encoder and retrain again on Netflix and YouTube and whatever to get the audio encoder um, to learn more information because now It's, um, it's trained and unfrozen on, on YouTube and whatever, and this is more information than we could get from image text or audio text samples. Yeah, and then uh, we freeze this again, and then we train this again with the audio text pairs that we have. And we can do this in both directions until we get um, like a sweet spot. And we can get really, really 
um, rich embeddings of all modalities. We could even do this with haptic data if we would have haptic data, for example, from, um, let's say, virtual reality, maybe in five years or so, people will use in mass like virtual reality gloves or such, we, then we could use this or whatever. And now let's say, now there comes the next point, how could we use this to train like a GPT with it? So the idea is here, um, like we take basically like the embeddings, let's say we have text or we have images and we have a web page with some text and some images and so, so we convert this into like uh, clip embeddings and these clip embeddings have many many dimensions let's say 1024 or 512 or whatever and um, the cool cool thing about this is that they have the same amount of dimensions um, the, the image embeddings the text embeddings the video embeddings and we can now take something like a vq vae and this can tokenize these embeddings here and convert them into um yeah into a list of discrete tokens something yeah like like it has a special vocabulary let's say its own language with for example like 8000 uh, possible words and it can generate like from one such embedding with 512 numbers it can generate like a word with, for example, maybe 10 words, and each word has a, is out of a vocabulary of like 8,000 possible tokens. And then it generates its own language to quantize these embeddings, because if you just feed in these um, embeddings that are continuous, then you could get like training instabilities. But if you could translate them to each embedding into like a sequence of 10 or 20 or 50 tokens, then you could just treat it like, like, a, like a text <laughs> and then feed it into um, a GPT and ge then just train a big transformer on streams of texts and videos and whatever. And so um, once you have like this gigantic pre-trained model on like all YouTube and Netflix and whatever, like with the quantized clip embeddings, then you could later fine-tune this for certain tasks and um, yeah, the cool thing is like if you would have, like, for example, a robot that moves in the house and tries out things or so, then you could like um, just model its video stream and audio stream and maybe some text data that it gets from the environment and the actions that it takes and add special tokens for each action that it performs. And then like with fine tuning on, on um, some data, it could learn that okay, I'm moving there, I'm pulling my hand onto, uh, I'm putting it onto the door handle, I'm doing this, now then, then happens this, and now happens this. And it basically would use the data about the general world model it got from the pre-training to and then fine-tuning to learn a world model that fits to its experiences from its environment. And then it could like learn to, to predict what would likely happen next if I do this? And what would likely happen if I would do this? And then once we uh, have this fine-tuned GPT that operates in the clip embedding space, in the quantized clip embedding space, in the, in the idea space, let's say, um, then we could use this to ask the model, what if you would do this action? What if you were in this and this situation and you would do this? And then it has an accessible world model that could be used for planning and for all kinds of stuff. Like um, So this, this would be really exciting. And um, I'm not sure how far this could get us. Um, it could also be augmented with like taking a GPT with memory augmentation. And you would have like a big database with episodes of previous stuff that you experienced. And whenever you are in a current situation, you just like take the um like like a retrieval mechanism um you would like make an embedding of the current situation that you have and then retrieve sit situations that you had experienced in the past that were similar and put them into the attention span so it's like if you're in a certain situation and you think oh yeah i 
had seen this before. Hmm, yeah, when I when I was in this in this situation, my car broke down. Uh, similarly to what uh, is happening today, I called this and this number. Okay, yeah. So like you could like retrieve from a big memory, and have would have like an episodic memory that um, where you could switch out data without having to retrain the GPT again. The idea of GPT. So, like, the first step to do actually this is to get, like, a big clip for all modalities, like, for audio, video, text, um, images, and eventually in the future more. And then we, uh, yeah, could quantize it and train a huge uh, sequence learning model. It doesn't need to be GPT. It could be whatever is fancy in one or two years, but, like, That's the plan, that's the idea I'm so excited about.